Welcome to Ask Us Marketing, Cali Collective live stream. I'm your host, Cali Fedesinko of Cali Collective, a digital marketing agency serving financial advisors. Uh, now, you've probably noticed a trend on your social media feeds and even on websites that you visit. Videos, videos here, videos there, videos everywhere. And while video has become a newish trend for advisors, today's guest is no stranger to video. In fact, I'd be willing to bet she was telling us all how vital video would become long before it was even on the radar. Today's guest is Laura Garfield of Idea to Cantor, a video production company serving advisors. Laura graciously agreed to be in our hot seat today to answer your questions about video marketing, specifically how to record and produce. Uh, so I'm going to start us out here with some of my own questions, but please ask your questions in the comments and we'll see them on our end and answer them as they come in. If we happen to get more than we can handle, we'll reply in the comments uh, after the event. So Laura, thank you so much for being here today. We're really excited to learn some new strategies from a longtime video pro. And Kelly, thanks so much for having me. And I feel like I'm getting flashbacks from my TV news days because as we started this live, there was this countdown and I was all of a sudden flashing back to being in the studio right before the show began. <laughs> 30 second and then the countdown from 10. I was like, here we go. We're live. This is so exciting. Hold my breath a little bit. Get ready. <laughs> Deep breathing. Uh-huh. Um, so I've known you, Laura, for almost a decade now, which is crazy. Um, we met for the audience. We met internally for when I was working at an independent firm that had hired Idea to Cantor to do some videos. And Laura, even back then, which was 10 years ago, I remember you being such an advocate for video. And you're like, this is where it's going to be. This is where the future is. Everyone should be on video. Um, so why did you believe it was like so powerful and relevant even then? There is something about video that is just much more personal than having a phone conversation with someone hearing their voice, which I mean, I feel like I never do anymore. Like it, our business is conducted mainly on video conferencing calls yeah. um, for the main reason, because you can feel like you're with people. Um, and that's what video really brings. There's some statistic out there that you get 60,000 times. Um, times the amount of information from one second of video mm. than you do from one second of reading copy. Um, and it's just because the facial expressions, the body language, the inflection, all of those pieces yeah. um, help people really understand you. In fact, I have an interesting tidbit that just happened to me last week. I was going back and forth with someone coordinating a project for a conference through video. And um, the person who was coordinating, I think, felt like we were losing um, communication or losing mm. the, the, the message was getting lost in translation. Yeah. And so she just recorded a quick video for me. And in 60 seconds, she said, so this is what I'm trying to get at. Mm. This is what I want to make sure you're not missing. And it just reinforced everything I know and believe about the power of video. Yeah. I mean, it's so strong. Uh, even you said, you know, our business is conducted and it's so true. I mean, both of us have remote businesses. Uh, I have seen people in person maybe once in the last two years. <laughs> and it, it is crazy how much can be conveyed through this medium. Um, so you've produced video for a long time. Mm -hmm. What would you say for the advisors who are like, well, why should I? Yeah, it's powerful, but what can I expect as my return on investment? And then how long would you say that return takes? Well, that's a great question. I answer that <laughs> weekly for advisors. It is my belief that anything you do with marketing, you should give it at least 18 months mm -hmm. to try it. Mm -hmm. And um Behind the scenes, we talk about folks who give things a try for a month or two as squirrels, yeah. because if you expect to um, 
have a major impact from any kind of marketing initiative from trying it for four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks. Yes. Um, I think you just have the wrong expectation. Now, that's not to say you can't get ROI from your first video. Yeah. And we've seen that happen for advisors. I'm thinking specifically of an advisor we work with in the Chicago area. He recorded his first video, got it compliance approved, sent it out to 300 people on his email distribution list. Um, he had done some other things with the video first. He put it on his website. He pushed it out on social. But we find email is crucial with video marketing. And yes. so he blasted this email out to 300 people, um, his clients, a uh, short list of prospects, and his COIs. And within eight minutes of sending it out, a prospect emailed him back and said they were ready to get started. And later that same afternoon, another prospect came that back. That is crazy. Gave him a call. So he won um, two new clients, really began two new relationships wow. from that very first video. And it, that is not a standalone story. We do yeah. hear that from advisors. Um, but I think the key to getting strong ROI with video marketing is what I call the fourth quarter of the football mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. So quarters one through three are what we do at Idea Kit um, and what you can do when you're DIYing. And that is really planning and mm -hmm. then recording and producing the story. Yeah. But that fourth quarter, you never play a football game without playing the fourth quarter. Right. Um, the fourth quarter is really that post and promote. And that's yeah. building your internal standard operating procedure to make sure that all of the things that should be done with your video get done um, or hiring someone to help you do that. Like, yes, <laughs> yes. Preach, not just that, but also preach about the 18 months part, because I, I do feel like uh, those stories that you gave, I, they do exist, obviously, but they're, they're more of the exception, at least in my experience, is usually you got to stick with it. And what's great about video that we've seen when we're pulling the metrics is that video has the longest shelf life out of any medium. So a blog, it doesn't maintain as long and neither does the social posts. Socials, I mean, are like, you got to keep up. <laughs> it's go, go, go. But videos, um, I mean, I remember having, when I worked internally at a firm and it was like a year later after producing a video, they had a prospect who watched it and reached out to them. And that was like a year ago. So the investment, you know, sometimes it just takes that the long haul. Yeah. And that's a story I hear over and over, because if you think about the way you engage with any business out there, um, you typically Google them before you ever make a move, whether it's a product or a service. And I hear from advisors um, frequently that they have prospective clients coming in and saying, I crawled around your website and watched every video that I could find before I made the decision to start yes. this first meeting. And it is really powerful, especially if you have a great value proposition kind of video on your homepage and bio videos on your bio page that is giving them a chance to really get to know you in a way that frankly, We've been in this since 2014, working with financial yeah. advisors doing video, but it is still not kind of this the cost of doing business. Not every financial advisor has video all over their website. Yes. So when you do, it is still um, putting you in front of the rest. Yes, I love that. Um, OK, so a couple of years ago, we created a document um, for our savvy advisors, which for our audience, if you're our Savvy Advisors is um, it's a membership to our website that allows you access to a lot of our free resources. And on there, we had budget-friendly video equipment lists. And as I understand it, Laura, advisors who use IdeaKit receive equipment from you. Is that right? And what kind of equipment uh, are you sending? And is it included in the cost? Because that's huge. Yeah, we do send out all of our tried and true tested equipment. I mean, I think we went through 30 different clip-on lavalier mics before we settled on the one we used. 
um, for years. And we are just now beginning to use a different one because mm -hmm. um, we found something we like even better um, for a insider's look at what we're okay. using for audio. Our favorite mic had been, and we still love the quality. Yeah. It's the Rode Smart Love. Okay. Um, we like it. Rode is R-O-D-E and then Smart Love. Um, love is for lavalier. Um, and we like it because the audio quality is really amazing. It's definitely not the cheapest mic out there, but it's not the most expensive. Um, some folks like to use sort of a podcasting mic, which is more of that directional mm. shotgun mic out in front of you. Mm. Um, most of our videos we shoot with advisors standing on their feet moving around to multiple locations. So we like that clip on love mic that just catches the audio right here, um, kind of in a personal way. And then um, a new mic we're beginning to use is something that's produced by Sennhauser. Um, and I wish I could spell it off the top of my head. I think it's S-E-N-N-H-A-U-S-E-R maybe. <laughs> spelling B live on A-U-M. <laughs> But the Sennhauser are also great audio quality. Um, and then as far as light, we're typically sending out a ring light and an extra stand. Um, we like to do that because um, when we're setting up a shot, we like to be able to offset the light. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not sort of giving you the flat sure. light on the face. And um, setting up uh, the talent in a way that we can use some natural light also. Um, so that's an option. I have a couple of lights set up around my desk right now that are called the Dazneys. It's D-A-Z-Z-N-E. Um, and I always recommend them if people kind of want to upgrade and go to sort of next level. Um, they're just a couple of LED panels, but they give you a lot of um, flexibility. And there's a little remote that goes Ooh, with now so that's great wherever you are you can adjust your light here let me adjust my light a little <laughs> that's amazing and that's why you're sending in the idea kit so the dasneys are not they are kind of an upgrade with the kit sure. um, you're typically sending out a ring light and then the separate stand i mean i think the remote is worth it so. <laughs> <laughs> i'm with you <laughs> especially if you're doing it on your own there's a lot you have to think about and that'd be so much easier than when you walk yeah. over here adjust this walk back over yeah. here <laughs> um now if you or anybody has spent time on the internet you've probably seen a bad video or two mm -hmm. um laura how do you coach advisors who are experiencing anxiety over creating a video because they don't want to look dumb like, how do you walk someone through that? Because that's definitely, I mean, that's a fear everybody has if they've made a video. Is, yeah. Are people going to laugh at me? And I would say that you need to accept the mantra, your first video is your first worst video. Mm. Let me say that again. Your first video is your worst video. And it's just going to get better and better from there. Yeah. It's just like anything, you know, it's like working the muscle, getting the practice in. Um, you really do have to do the work in video to yeah. get better. And Callie, I've watched you progress. You can probably yeah. relate to this. I've watched your videos get better and better as you get more comfortable. Oh, yeah. Camera. <laughs> What's been your uh, secret sauce? Doing it, just like you said, you know, Um I mean, even with the live stream, right? I mean, the first one, I, we definitely had some awkward pauses. And that's when, like, you know, you just learn as you go. I go, so I went in, I'm like, okay, I need to have a long list of questions mm -hmm. prior to getting in there. Otherwise, there's going to be some uncomfortable silences. So beyond just recognizing that you're going to get better and better, you just hit on the other thing that's really important for video, and that is um, preparation. And yes. I do think people take for granted that, okay, if I can just get past the fear, I'm going to record this and that's going to yeah. be, it's going right. to be good. And really there are ways you can practice or get ready before you record a video. And I'm sure what you're doing to prep for a live stream is a little different than how we would prep for um, 
an advisor recording a two to three minute video that is already fully pre-scripted as opposed right. to sort of this live Q&A that we're doing. But when it comes to recording a script that you already have, um, I'm assuming you'd probably be using a teleprompter as opposed to trying to memorize it. Yes. But Great. This is actually my next question. <laughs> I'm say, what do you use and what do you recommend? Absolutely. Um, Let's get to that. But let me walk you through um, what I do with the script. So my recommendation is to print your script out and then mark it up. And we used to do this in news all the time. And so if you imagine you're anchoring a newscast, you are going from um, doing a full 30 minute show at five o'clock, at six o'clock and at 10 o'clock. So there's just all of this all of this content that you have to constantly be reading live. And so the way that anchors prepare is they get all of their scripts printed out and they go through and they mark them up. So just marking the most important word in each sentence. And so when you print it out, it's really nice to be able to mark up your script. Um, and then the second step of that is to take the script and stand in front of your bathroom mirror or a big mirror in your bedroom or a mirror in your office and read your script. And so that's just hold your script up make some eye contact with yourself in the mirror and deliver it and even practice what you're going to do with your hands. Mm. Um, typically, Sharon, my co-founder, likes to say this all the time, don't do the guns, don't point at the camera, but like what can you do with your hands that feels like a natural gesture um, that reinforces those important words that you're calling out? So what kind of hand gestures do you recommend? Um, I do a lot of like, I'm going to do it high since this is kind of cropped type, but I do yeah. a lot of, you know, reinforcing words this way or like this. Um, Sharon does a lot of kind of presenting. So just mm -hmm. anything you can do that's within the shot because um, you kind of know where you're, where you're framed and what's cropped out and what matters and what doesn't. Yeah, that's actually a great point about the hands. And I'm going to turn your, I don't know if you're frozen for our, our viewers or just on my end. So real quick, I'm going to turn your video off and back on and see if it passes okay. it. Well, it's still frozen on my end, but if it's working on yours, I'm going to assume it's working for everyone else. Um, great thing you said about the hands is that's also what we have studied with thumbnails is it's really great if you get someone in an action shot because uh, people, you know, you're only seeing a tiny little square. And so the more motion or uh, interesting pose you can grab, the more people are going to click on it. Um, that And that kind of goes back to you said you, the first video that you produced is, um, your worst one and i feel like get with me kelly your first video is your worst video. <laughs> and i feel like with the thumbnails people get very self-conscious of how they look um but i find that it's more important you get more clicks if you have an interesting pose than you do if you are smiling and looking great um so you kind of just have to lean into it lean into the awkward yeah and i can tell you um we we live by that at idea decanter and my personal feeling when I see my thumbnails with me making like some big expression, yes. I'm like, are we really going to use that? I look ridiculous, but you're right. Like yeah. it looks more animated. It looks more action packed and people are more likely to click on it. If they think yes. you're going to be entertaining. Um, I would say, especially on YouTube, the social posts, I feel like the videos play automatically a lot of times. So the thumbnail isn't as important, but mm -hmm. YouTube, it's like, you live and you die by those thumbnails. Yeah. Um, okay, let me see what other questions I've got here. Oh, I did want to add that yes. there are teleprompter apps out there. Okay. And so you were asking for tips and hacks for teleprompters. There's one I like called Teleprompter Pro, mm -hmm. but they're depending on if you're Apple or if you're Android, just go to your Google Play Store or your App Store and search up um, teleprompter. There are oftentimes um, teleprompter apps you can download and load in like up to three scripts and use for free. What I think is important and the reason why I pay to subscribe yes. to Teleprompter Pro is because if you don't, you get their watermark in the corner of your video, which you don't want. Mm -hmm. You want your own branding mm -hmm. on it. 
Um, but I think that's a great app to use. And um, you can control speed. You can control, you know, if the background is black and the font is white, or if it's reversed, you can change the font size. And it actually records within the app so you can see, you know, what's happening and then decide at the end of that record if you want to trash it or if you want to save it to your camera roll. And does that work on your phone and computer? Yeah, there. I do not use teleprompter apps on my computer, mm -hmm. um, but I believe Teleprompter Pro does. Okay, perfect. Um, I personally like to record on my computer. Uh, if people are recording on their phone, what do you recommend? Um, so I've got my phone right here. I'll show. You can like have it facing towards you or this way. Obviously, there's three cameras on this end. So I'm going to assume the picture quality is going to be better here. Yeah. But then I can't see my um, yeah. teleprompter or, you know, what I look like. <laughs> so yeah. what do you recommend for people with? I would say if your phone is, you've bought it within the last two years, you bought it new within the last two years, yeah. that you are safe to record on the selfie side um, so that you can use a teleprompter app. You can check your face, uh, sure. make sure your hair looks good. Uh, the cameras all over the phone have come a long, long way. And yeah. most phones these days, it, you can record in 4K on the front or the back. Um, you're right. I only have two cameras on the back of mine, but they are amazing. So we sh we use the back cameras on phones a lot to shoot what we call B-roll or cover video. Um, but in any situation where you think you want to be able to see yourself, I would go ahead and mm -hmm. use the phone side. Got it. Love that advice. Um, okay. I've got a question here. We're about seven minutes out. So I think I'm going to go to some of our quick questions for you. Um, they're practical ones. So how many videos should I shoot at once? I like to do three if possible. Okay. And the reason why is depending on your cadence, most of our advisors we work with record or release rather a video a month. And so when you record three at a time, you actually have a whole quarter's worth of content mm. that goes through compliance and is ready to use all at once. Um, for our own marketing purposes, our cadence is once a week. And so, but I am not starring in every video. So if I can record one lot. video in a shot, um, I'm just getting more content done at one time. Um, and what I'm talking about here is probably like two to three minute videos. If you're shooting shorts, you can probably do more in one session. Um, what you really run into is just being able to be present and be in the right mindset and keep your energy up through as many videos as you can. So if you go in thinking, I'm going to shoot 12 shorts, you know, 12 one minute videos and knock this out and we're going to be set for the next three months. Right. Um, that's fantastic. But if you can, if you find that you have the energy to keep it up or if you want to drink coffee beforehand and really <laughs> amp yourself up. Right. Um, but uh, that's what I do. So. <laughs> <laughs> Callie's secret video tips. <laughs> Caffeine. <laughs> Um, so, you know, speaking of that, if I'm doing three videos in a row, is it okay if I wear the same thing in all of my videos? I think absolutely you can. Um, and it's certainly fine to also do a quick wardrobe change. I mean, you could take a top and change a jacket. Yeah. Um, you know, your, your whole body isn't really showing. So if you have three options that are, you know, hanging on the back of your door and you can do a quick change, I think that's always a great idea. Yeah. Um, someone who works on our team, uh, Jesse, is always saying, well, the more places you can shoot, the bigger you look. Like, it looks like you're a bigger office. Um, so I and I always think that when I'm recording, so I'm like, should I change my clothes? Will anyone even notice? I don't know. <laughs> so. I what I like to think about when it comes to wardrobe is what that looks like if you're putting all of your videos onto a digest kind of landing page on your website, or if you think about how that shows up on a YouTube account with video after video after video, mm -hmm. you want to be wearing the same thing in all of those. Um, we get a lot of questions about what do I wear for video? Yeah. 
And the answer pre-COVID was always dress 10% better than you would when you were meeting a client. Yeah. Like just really like take the time. Um, we do have some, some advisors um, who will get their hair done, who mm. will get their makeup done before a record session, um, which is very nice to be able to bundle records and do like three videos at a time when you're investing that kind of time and preparation into it. But these days, I do think that there has been a real move in how advisors are dressing when they meet with clients and definitely a more casual approach. So I would say just show up as who you are. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we have advisors who even record videos um, in workout clothes. So okay. be yourself. Yeah, that's comfortable. Um, <laughs> If I make a mistake when I'm recording, should I start over? Or is that something you guys edit out in the production process? So for our idea kit clients, we do edit it out. If you are DIYing, I think that can be one of the biggest barriers. Yeah. I have to get this clean take. I have to get this perfect from the first word out of my mouth to the close. And that can be really daunting. And in fact, that can keep people from recording videos. Mm -hmm. And I like this advice that I borrowed from someone who was teaching about presenting live on stage to audiences. And it was that the crowd is really pulling for you. Mm -hmm. um, they want you to deliver the message so they can absorb it. And I really do find the same is true for video. Um, so if you can let go of that, this didn't come out perfectly. I stumbled in the middle. Um, I can't use that take. It's going to take me 80 takes to get through this flawlessly. That's going to stop you from ever creating video. You're never going to harness the power of it. So let right. that go and just do it naturally and know that your audience isn't trying to pick you apart. Yeah. They get your message. So just go with it, deliver your message. You know, if you totally ramble off track or need some editing, um, then do that, but give it a shot with, you know, allowing yourself some grace or yeah. a stumble or two. Yeah. That's hard for, uh, you know, us perfectionists. <laughs> uh, so we are coming up here to the 30 minute mark. So I just want to thank everybody who has joined us. Um, if you ask a question that we didn't get to or we didn't see, we will be responding to your comments on social media. And you can always, of course, email us at info at calicollective.com. Now, if you want to find out more about what Laura and the Idea Decanter team do and how they can help you with video, she can be reached at the following. And we'll put that up. And it's, I think we've got a QR code for everybody. Yeah, that QR code, I think, goes straight to our um, free strategy session. So if you want to find out more about getting some help from start to finish with video production um, in a way that can help you um, set some achievable goals and um, track them as you go and um, really use the power of video, harness it to grow your business. Um, that's what that link is for. That's what we can talk about. Um, whether or not you have uh, tried video before or um, are a total newbie, we, uh, this would be a great conversation for you to have if you're interested. That's awesome. I definitely recommend it for our audience. Um, be sure to join us next month as we talk to Sasha Merkovich about generational transitions and how to prepare your business and marketing to outlive your working days. Um, you also can get our budget-friendly equipment list and our six video thumbnail tips, which I had mentioned earlier about the hands. <laughs> um, and you can use our template to make your own um, thumbnail just by becoming a savvy advisor on our website. Just go to calicollective.com slash get savvy. Do that. Uh, because <laughs> thumbnails are important. <laughs> right. And thank you, Laura, again so much for answering all of our video questions. And everyone, make sure to schedule that consultation with Laura because she's got some great ideas 
I mean, she knew video was going to be the it thing 10 years ago. So thank you, Laura. We love you and Idea Decanter. Thanks for having me, Kelly. Great.